What's going on? We're gonna call it the 49ers Sunday Sunset with Lombardi. I'm sitting here waiting. This is in Tennessee, by the way. The sunset looks so nice that I just decided we had to go live, talk a little 49ers football for a few minutes. I'm gonna go live a little bit later tonight in all likelihood in a little bit more of a formal setting, but why don't we uh, see what the horses are up to here on this beautiful Sunday evening. I wonder what the weather's like in California. Probably a lot of rain. I heard there's a lot of snow. I'll be flying there tomorrow, so it'll be good. But uh, we can talk franchise tag deadline. That's on Tuesday. We can talk, obviously, Robbie Gold as it might relate to that after yesterday's news from Robbie Gold through Adam Schefter that he plans to not kick for the 49ers anymore. And he said similar things in 2019 when the tag was actually applied. So... We still have to wait and see how that's all going to turn out, but that's the Robbie Gold stance. Uh, we could talk about the new league year starting the week after this next one. And, of course, this is Sunset with Lombardi. Sunday Sunset with Lombardi. We have the Lombardi AM scramble. That's going to be 8 a.m. Pacific time again tomorrow. And how about this on Sundays? Wherever we're at, we get a nice little sunset show in, if we have time. I'm not going to make this a regular fixture. Yeah, Tennessee sunsets are... Really nice. Get some horses on the show. Beautiful. Hello. They're all coming over. They all want to be on the live. <laughs> yeah. They'd get mad at me if I went on a ride. That'd be funny. It, the weather here has been spectacular, though. It's a good... 66, 67 degrees today. And I know in California, it's kind of the opposite. It's been cold. It's been, I can't even get up to Shaver Lake right now. If I were in California, can't get up into the mountains because it is, I, I don't know these ones' names, to be honest. These are Margo's and her parents' horses. And I, I do know the names of the ones over in the barn over there. These are the mares, I believe. And, uh, I will get their names for you on the next show because I've never actually interacted with these horses. Definitely their first time on the live. All right, so pop in your questions here. I got a few minutes. I got some time to kill uh, as this sunset takes hold. Once it gets really dark, you won't even be able to see me. Right now the lighting is, is really good, but it's not going to be as good in a little bit. The franchise tag deadline is on Tuesday. That's going to be March 7th, 1 p.m. Pacific time. If the 49ers are going to tag anybody, I think the most realistic candidate would be Robbie Gold, but it's not a likely candidate, just saying that that's, that's the tag deadline. Obviously, this week or this weekend, yesterday, Robbie Gold said that he doesn't plan to kick for the 49ers next year, that he's going to test free agency. And, you know, I'm going to be talking about that a little bit later tonight, and we could discuss it right now. It, that There could be bluffing going on from both sides. From the 49ers side, where they're talking about taking a look at rookie kickers, which they obviously did at this combine. And from Robbie Gold's side saying, okay, well, enough with you guys. I'm going to test the markets of free agency. So it's a situation where sometimes as time passes, both sides will come back to the table that's what happened in 2019 when Gold held out, but that was after the 49ers placed the franchise tag on him. So obviously a little bit different situation in 2019 because the 49ers had that contractual control turned into a stare down. Who blinks first between them and Robbie Gold? This year, I mean, they could slap the franchise tag on him before Tuesday, but it's a little pricier than it was last time. And, you know, I think that that was an unpleasant experience for both parties. So I think they'd rather avoid that this time around. And this time around, gold is 40 too. So that's different. He was 36 last time that we went through this process. Now he's 40 years old. All right. No, I'm sorry. I, I know a couple of you just posted some questions. I was just looking at the horses, checking out the sunset. See, They're right behind me. Lighting not as good when I when I go that way, though, so we'll stick it uh, right here and go. Is Brunskill more of a roamer, or would it make sense to set him as a permanent right tackle? You know, they view Brunskill more as a guard, but I think above everything else, they view him as a roamer. 
a couple years ago when they were trying to slot him into that starting right guard spot, they're like, no, he's a guard, he's a guard. Even though his metrics were better at tackle, which to me makes sense because, uh, I mean, he was a college tight end, right? And if you're a college tight end, that's, you know, probably better suited to playing on the exterior line. So uh, then they try to convert Brunskill into a right guard where, where he's been primarily over the past couple of years. But now they're grooming Burford to be the starter there. Split time with Brunskill last year. And when I asked Lynch about Brunskill at the NFL Combine, he was talking about him at every single position. I think they need to re-sign Brunskill as depth that can uh, fill in anywhere for the 49ers. Is Jalen Moore in the hot seat? I've never heard of a backup tackle being on the hot seat. I've heard of coaches being on the hot seat. But I see what you're saying. Is he on the bubble to make the roster? And, yeah, potentially, I mean, depending on who they bring in, rookie-wise, you're only going to carry eight or nine offensive linemen, right? So if he's your 10th best guy, he doesn't make the team. So it's Jalen Moore's offseason to, to show up, put up or shut up offseason for somebody like Jalen Moore. Eric Gomes says the new offensive philosophies make it so field goal kickers are less valuable. That's – possible but it also you could say that maybe kickers are a little bit more valuable in a different way and that's because they're kicking long field goals now right you got guys who can boot at 60 yards the 55 to 60 the 49ers don't really attempt that or haven't attempted that with Robbie Gold so I think you've got kickers with power legs who are able to attempt on like fourth and 10 you know from the 42 or wherever it may be uh, may be able to attempt a 59 yard field goal but, yes, there, I think you guys want to talk about the biggest weakness of Kyle Shanahan. I think it's his fourth down decision making. I don't think it's good. I think Nick Sirianni obviously took him to school in the NFC Championship game. Shanahan's got to be better deciding when to go for it on fourth down, and it needs to be more often. I think the 49ers are too conservative. And if Shanahan gets better in that regard, then, yes, the whole kicker is not as valuable trope becomes true, right? Because if Kyle Shanahan is going for it on more fourth downs where the analytics tell him to go for it, then all of a sudden you're not leaning on Robbie Gold as much for a bailout. Yeah, Robbie Gold has been a crutch. I think he has been for the 49ers. That's a great point by Eric Gomes. Kyle does play it safe all the time, but then he takes random risks that don't make a whole lot of sense. There, you know, all, all the analytics, people tr track the behavior on fourth down of these coaches, and they can't make sense of Kyle's behavior. They think he's conservative, weirdly at times, and aggressive, weirdly at times. So, uh, you know, whereas somebody like Nick Sirianni was aggressive consistently when he should have been. But this sunset just keeps on getting better. The horses have lost interest in the YouTube Live but the sunset now, we got that, we got those orange skies here. Again, the weather here has been awesome. Unseasonably warm winter. It's been unseasonably warm and uh, cold in California. You guys can see this. It is a nice situation. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't talk about other veteran kickers right now until this Robbie Gold situation is firmly resolved. We've heard from Robbie Gold's side, not kicking for the 49ers anymore. But minds can change on his part, and we need to, you know, make sure the 49ers are firmly out too. The 49ers said they would scout young guys, but they haven't said that they won't re-sign gold or won't – even they haven't even firmly ruled out the franchise tag. By Tuesday, we will have the final word on that. So we're at that time of the day where obviously – that house looks beautiful right now, but you could see the moon. Look at that. There's the moon. There's the barn. Colors are crisp, and you go over to the sunset. This is that time of the day where it's really nice. It's really nice. You got to love it. Franklin, Tennessee. So I'm flying to San Francisco tomorrow. Engagement party coming up on Saturday at the winery. It's going to be at a winery in the Central Valley. Um, see who crashes it from, from the audience here. And then free agency starts right after that. So... Stuff is going to be moving. Stuff is going to be moving fast. You know, somebody says that they're surprised the 49ers interviewed wide receivers. It's a constant roster replenishment exercise in the NFL. There's only like six or seven players left right now on the roster or in 2023, under contract for 2023, uh, from the 2019 Super Bowl team. That's a fun fact for you. So anyway, you might not be planning to 
draft one of those guys or, you know, even in the moment, think that you might acquire him as an undrafted free agent, but you always have to be ready to add to the roster at any position, even the ones that are strong right now, because injuries can happen at any time. And then listen to this. Even when a player isn't needed in a current draft cycle, you do your due diligence on him now when you have a chance to interview him. So that way, a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, four years from now, when that player comes up in free agency, you have an idea of what this guy's about. It comes back around. So the intelligence that you gather now is not necessarily going to be used for this season's draft. It can be used for the future. You want to know the entire league. Draft facility, uh, draft, per, uh, uh, the draft is divided into, into two segments for personnel groups or NFL teams. The college side of the scouting department is obviously looking at college players. The pro side of the scouting department, which was also at the NFL Combine for the 49ers, is in charge of scouting NFL players. The pro side of the scouting department is going to take the files that the college side produces on all these players, and they're going to keep those files. They're going to have access to those files over the next few years in case the 49ers are ever in a position where they're interested in a player who went to another team in the 2023 draft. So it is important to scout everything at all times. You can never take a rest. All right, horses have lost interest in the show, so why don't we walk back over here? Gosh, what a night, huh? What a night. Continually scouting in the NFL. Sunset show. Happy that everybody liked the, the gold videos that we put out yesterday. And, of course, probably going to go for at least one more today. But I think that, you know, based on what happened in 2019, 49ers slapped the franchise tag on Robbie Gold. He wasn't happy about it. He said that he's considering not wanting to kick there anymore. He held out. And then it all kind of figured itself out in July. This year it's going to have to figure itself out sooner, especially if the franchise tag isn't involved. But, uh, you know, that should have taught us that nothing is final with Robbie Gold. Nothing is final in the National Football League. So just let's just wait and see how the 49ers react. I think, personally, they want Robbie Gold back, but at their price. I think that he wants to be paid like a top three kicker, which would be over $5 million per year. I think the 49ers want to come in at like $4 million per year. Is it worth playing hardball over a million dollars? I think so, based on where the 49ers are cap-wise, because it's a tight situation. So, the, the, I mean, Robbie Gold is in fairly unprecedented territory because most guys that make over $5 million a year, in fact, all guys that make over that much, are going to be in their mid-30s at oldest. They're not going to be 40 like he is. He negotiated his last deal, which was 4.8 per year, which was number two in the NFL behind only Justin Tucker at the time of signing when he was 36. Now that he's 40, there is a risk with re-signing him to go along with the risk of not re-signing him. You risk not re-signing him. Uh, you know, the risk there is that this is a really good kicker that is, you know, has already knocked through epic kicks in the playoffs for you, including that one at Green Bay, that'd be tough to not have, to not have that security, right? Look at Cody Parkey, one of the successors of Robbie Gold in Chicago, the double doink. You don't want to go that way if you're the 49ers, right? But at the same time, there's a risk with keeping Robbie Gold since he's 40. He's missed some games with injury. All that kind of stuff has happened. So the, it, it's a situation that's tricky. The, it, it's a calculated risk to let him go if that's what the 49ers ultimately decide to do. Gold, I think, might be taking a calculated risk now by talking about uh, not re-signing with the 49ers, testing free agency, and, and going elsewhere. And I think that both sides want the best deal possible. And uh, the 49ers, I would think, would want gold if they can get that best deal possible. But obviously, at this moment, uh, it doesn't seem like that's going to be uh, something that happens. Uh, it, but it still can, is my point. It, everything's still on the table. Until the fat lady is sung in the NFL, do not consider anything to be uh, a, a you know don't consider any stance to be final we've seen things change we've, we've seen things evolve and we know that negotiations are negotiations sunset oh yeah it's looking nice the problem is that it like the, the color is terrible on the sunset right here if I walk this way so why don't I just like backtrack why don't we do this 
There, you guys don't have to see my face anyway. I can walk backwards as I'm going on the live. How's the state of the scouting team fared as the 49ers staff has been poached over the years? This is a good question because they've lost a lot of coaches. Well, they've lost the, the, you know, one of their top guys in Rand Carthon, who's now the GM here in Tennessee. But other than that, they've kept a lot of that scouting department. They've kept Adam Peters, who's actually the, the head scout, the assistant GM. So that's that's been a big one. Do I think the 49ers' first pick will be used on a tackle? What, what kind of tackle? Defensive tackle or an offensive tackle? I, you know, it, if the first pick is down to number 100, who cares what position it's used on? That's, that's more important when we're talking about a first-round pick, especially in the top 10. But it's really hard to guess, and even the 49ers probably don't know. They've got, they got like three picks in four selections there at the end of the third round. So, you know, it doesn't really matter what order of position those picks are, are dedicated to. This is the view. Look at that. We're going to go to the porch. Going to go up to the porch and sit down. Yeah, you got to draft the best available, especially if you're... I mean, again, the 49ers this year, it is their sweet spot to draft lower. But it definitely is not a spot of specificity if you're drafting first at number 100. You've just got to do your scouting and get the best player available on your board and trust the scouting department in that regard. First pick has to be the best player. Absolutely. I think they might draft a quarterback again. A lot of it might depend on who they're able to nab in free agency, right? But I think that you've got to just fortify that room. And Brock Purdy's surgery should be this week. That also makes it a big week. So, you know, with Brock Purdy's surgery happening, you're going to get a much clearer prognosis of his future, you know, where he's going to be. Trey Lance continues the throw. He should be fully cleared by OTAs. I'm getting really good at this, by the way. This is the backpedal. This is the YouTube live backpedal. I've never done one of these. Definitely not going to do this out in public, like out on a sidewalk, because I definitely could uh, eat shit if I did that. But the, the backpedal actually is good technique on, on private property. Um, Talking, what else? Oh, yeah, yeah. We're going to find out about Brock Purdy this week once he goes under the knife, presumably, if that does actually happen. And once you have that prognosis, you can combine it with the outlook on Trey Lance and you can decide if you're the 49ers, you know, what do you want to fortify the quarterback position with? I think the whole time I've been saying that it's almost certainly going to have to be a veteran. John Lynch confirmed that at the NFL Combine. And then you add somebody like Jake Hayner from Fresno State. I say somebody like Jake Hayner, but they also met with DTR, right, from uh, UCLA, mobile quarterback. That guy, that guy had a highlight reel for the Bruins. There are a lot of options and I think that strength of numbers of that quarterback room is the way that it has to go. You know, it, it had to go that way last year. They wouldn't have made it to the NFC Championship game without strength in numbers in the QB room. And obviously, the NFC Championship game ended for the 49ers when they ran out of numbers in the quarterback room. So it is absolutely key to have healthy, capable bodies at the game's most important position. Yeah, the horse does want to be petted, but I was holding the camera, which was the problem at the time. You kind of pet them on the nose and they, they, they do like you if they come up to you or they think you have food. Jay Kaner will get overdrafted because of Purdy, says one of the commenters. Uh, it's tough to know how good Jay Kaner's going to be, how good anybody's going to be. But I do know Jay, Jay Kaner's really tough, and I know that that's an attribute that the 49ers really appreciate, Kyle Shanahan, especially in prospective quarterbacks. I think the Baker Mayfield rumors were started by Albert Breer. I don't think that they were actually sourced from inside the 49ers building. I think Al, I, and I respect Albert Breer's work, but I think he just – you know, this is the fault of people who aggregate his work. People say, hey, 
Albert Breer is reporting that the 49ers are interested in Jake uh, in Baker Mayfield, and it's like, no, no, he's not reporting they're interested in Baker Mayfield. Albert Breer is saying that he thinks the 49ers might be interested in Baker Mayfield. But then it's like a game of telephone, and stuff gets lost in, uh, in translation, and that's definitely uh, not something that I, I think should be, you know, we got to be way more careful with words and aggregating, but people want their, their clicks and their retweets and their video views, so, so they make it sound like Albert Breer said something that he didn't. Okay, so here we go. We are going to sit down on the porch. Right there, nice little seat. Ah, yes. Very nice. Been walking too much, so I'll sit down here. Walking and holding the camera. It is a nice deck, very southern deck, isn't it? New contract for Bosa soon? It depends on what you mean by soon. I think that Nick Bosa is going to sign by training camp for sure. But to me, it's the deadline pressure that seems to get these deals done. Such a peaceful night. It's in the 60s here, by the way. I mean, I don't think that Baker Mayfield of the 49ers would be a horrible signing if they get him at the right price. That's It's always the price. That's... Right now, the 49ers probably looking at a maximum, and this is a maximum of five to seven million dollars per year for that backup veteran quarterback. And if Purdy's surgery goes really well, maybe, maybe they, they don't we even want to spend that much, maybe even less than that. Um, by the way, this is it's moving up and down because I'm in the rocking chair right now, rocking back and forth. And that is also a question. What type of role would... Hey, how's it going? Oh, hey. <laughs> I didn't know you were here. I'm on a live right now. Let me end it really fast. All right, I'll be right there. 